Life? What life you talking about? I ain't got no life. I just got living. The only way I get to do that is through these pelts. When The Revenant was released, nearly all of the movie's press focused on the behind the scenes insanity that went into its production. Natural light, extreme locations, chasing snow in Argentina. Even all of this madness was outshined by the film's star. And the Oscar goes to Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> Its incredible execution allowed some of the more layered elements to be disguised by the spectacle. This is no standard action revenge movie. This is a film by Inyaritu. Inyaritu's filmmaking career frequently draws upon themes of spirituality and faith, or the lack thereof. In Hope for Film, producer Ted Hope describes the writing of Inyaritu's film 21 Grams. Alejandro and his scriptwriter Guillermo Arriaga had developed a non-linear approach to their story, but it was funny because the two of them were coming at the concept from opposite philosophical positions. Alejandro is a believer, and Guillermo is an atheist, and yet both men wanted to tackle the question of fate. In The Revenant, we get two characters who serve as examples of these polar opposite beliefs. Fitzgerald is an atheist, and Glass is a man of faith. In their world, life is a constant struggle to survive. In the film's very first shot, one of the many signature long takes, Glass is deep in the woods, silently hunting for food with a clear connection to the natural world. Oh, shit. In the movie's second shot, we meet Fitzgerald as he's pissing on a tree and then surrounded by animal carcasses and describing their value displaying his self-serving view of nature as something to be exploited. Remember, we're not doing no 15 pelt fails. We're doing 30 pelt fails. In just two shots, the film has already established that both men have survived this rough lifestyle using polar opposite philosophies and tactics. Up until now, that's what's kept them alive. In the opening battle, the ideologies behind their survival are displayed even more clearly. First, we see glass taken down, and in the moment before death, He is rescued by an unseen outside force. In the very next shot, Fitzgerald is taken down the exact same way. But instead, he emerges all on his own. Both Glass and Fitzgerald have overcome adversity time and time again in the wilderness through different methods and mindsets. Bob, Bob, he wasn't a, uh, a religious man, you know? You couldn't grow it or kill it or eat it, and he just plain old didn't believe in it. Fitzgerald's dialogue confirms his priority is keeping himself alive, and in a conversation with Bridger, we get a sense of his take on religion. At that moment, he told me he found God. He's a squirrel. Yeah, big old meaty one. I found God, he used to say. While <laughs> sitting and basking in the glory and the sublimity of mercy, I shot and ate that son of a bitch. If he can't see it, he doesn't believe it. So what does he believe in? What he can see? Money. This pursuit is his livelihood and what's kept him going. Goddamn, wish my daddy was a doctor, then he could have bought me a captain's job. Because Fitzgerald doesn't see beyond what's in his vision, he sees God as a human and frequently uses faith talk sardonically. The way I see it, I see it a lot of twice now. So I, I ought to be God to you. God giveth. God take it away. <laughs> and if money is analogous to faith, then his source of godlike power is Captain Henry. Henry is the financier, and therefore he controls the decisions the party makes, including who dies. But more importantly to Fitzgerald, who gets paid. There's a seventy dollar bonus from the Rocky Mountain Fur Company to the two men that stays back with glass to see this through. All right. All right, Mr. Bridger feels the same way, then I'll lag behind with him. You? Yeah. And you already lost my share of the pelts, so I don't got much choice but to try and make it up some other means. Besides, sticking around for another day or two don't make no difference. $300? At least I get to go home with something. It all boils down to one scene. After abandoning Glass, killing Hawk, and nearly killing Bridger, all for the same purpose, Fitzgerald returns to Henry. And here we see that for Fitzgerald, this is religion. This is purpose. Starting off by talking about how Glass was buried right and falsely describing how important it was to Bridger that they put a cross on his grave, Fitzgerald successfully convinces Henry of his honesty. Henry goes upstairs to get the money, 
literally becoming the man upstairs. Am I to uh, assume that the agreed arrangement did not change? Uh, fortunately for me, it did not, no. At this point in the film, we stay downstairs. Henry's footsteps above represent the power that looms above Fitzgerald. And for Fitzgerald, this is his cathedral. Notice how the sunlight hits him here, but equally important, how a candelabra in the shape of a cross is directly pointing at him. He's in his own mind's sacred ground. Thank you for your courage, honor, and service. Later, after Henry shares he will not be paying. Until then, nobody gets paid. Fitzgerald strips him of his power by robbing him. And now we go upstairs to see that his safe and the power that comes with it has been removed. In complete contrast, Glass's world is connected to the natural and spiritual world, which he inhabits alone most of the film. In the scene that immediately follows Fitzgerald's visit to his monetary sanctuary, we see Glass dream, and inside his dream are ruins of a church integrated with the natural world. We see that he, like the native people he has loved, have a deep connection to the world a higher being created, and respect its power as what's kept him alive. While Fitzgerald is constantly rescuing himself, and surviving based on his own independence, Glass is numerous times protected or rescued by outside forces, people, or nature. Nearly all of these pieces he interacts with die in front of him, including the bear, a horse, hawk, hiccup, and yet he lives. But he carries with him their message. In his dreams he sees hawk, he's wearing the bear skin, he sleeps inside the horse, he reveres every element of the natural world because in this harsh landscape, He's dependent on this natural world for his survival. Indeed, part of Glass's faith comes from the fact that by human logic, especially of the time, he should have died after all of this. The word revenant means one who has returned as if from the dead, and everyone else around him has died, but he, for some reason, has been given a second chance to live. Glass's character arc is finding his purpose. Why was he given another chance when so many around him have not been? His initial answer is to avenge the death of Hawk. Midway through the movie, Hickok meets Glass on his journey of revenge. He says to him, By the end of the film, Glass has come to the same conclusion. This moral transformation is ultimately a display of testing faith. When you see the religious subtext of The Revenant, it becomes clear Inuritu has created another film that ties into his theme of conflicting faiths, a question he continues to explore throughout his filmography. In the end, it's the man who believes that survives. But Inuritu doesn't blatantly expose his religious philosophies throughout the film, because these beliefs require a level of faith. Instead, he shows us two characters, their conclusions, then he looks directly at the viewer and asks, what do you believe?